Yeah, so uh, welcome back. Uh, we will now continue uh, and look at some religious movements uh, which have taken place of late. And uh, you can see the list of those movements here on the screen. Uh, cult sects, uh, denominations, uh, churches, and new, uh, new religious movements. Uh, please don't confuse the last one with the NAMs. The NAMs are the new age movements, and these are the NRMs, the new religious movements. So let's quickly go to uh, 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 these organizations and, and these movements. Uh, there, there are now church type organizations. Okay, the church was. A religious organization but now there are church types or type organizations okay uh, the church was a powerful organization okay the, the church had a lot of political and economic ideological influence okay it still does if you go to the vatican the church is a strong influence and it does influence a lot a lot of people of course so when the uh, when when the uh Mer merovingian empire was founded of course, it was all done with the blessing of, of the Pope. Those were different times. But even today, the church has at least moral influence. So uh, uh, there are large organizations, OK? Um, and and uh, <coughs> what is a member now of a church? Difficult to define, OK? Um, uh, who comes to the church? For what reason do they come to the church, OK? Uh, when you're talking about the membership of the church, the validity of the data is also important. Okay, who are the active members? Who are simply there for for one occasion? Who are there who go for the funeral and don't even pray? I mean, if he goes to the church, he he does attend the church, but what's the purpose? So, so the validity here is important. Are we actually measuring what we want to measure? Okay. Um, uh, but now we come to the church type organizations. So over time, as you know, or ought to know, that uh, there was a separation between the church and the state. That does not mean that the that Europe lost its religious or Christian ethos. That was that's not the meaning. The simple thing is that in order to continue to evolve, Europe had to give free rein to new ideas. And if the church was getting in its way, then there, is, there was a separation between the church and the state that was called for. And roughly that has been called the secular, uh, the secular movement. But the secular movement was not exactly secular. It retained its Christian character. So, uh, uh, so well, once they were separated from politics, then they, they uh, concentrated on finding the true religious roles. OK. Uh, um, um, they have always been these uh, um, um, bureaucratic organizers. Please keep in mind that the churches are usually, whether they are whether they are in any society, the church is a bureaucratic organization. It has a power structure. It has an administrative structure. Uh, and we all know that the power of the church was first uh, challenged by Martin Luther. Um, um, you know the, the organized structure and, and how the church should be organized and how it should be run. Uh, and what influences? In fact, at one point, uh, from Martin Luther went as far as to say that the church was actually the Pope was actually the Antichrist. So he may have been extending things uh, too far, but it shows the extent of the feelings about the church at that point in time. Um, so uh, there are uh, there, there are these organized churches, as I said, in all all religions. Um, and <coughs> It's a it's a it's a big question mark whether the whether Islam has any uh, organized clergy because the belief in in God uh, and uh, and and the prophethood uh, of uh, um, of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu uh, alaihi wasallam it basically makes you a Muslim. There's no baptism. There's no confirmation. There's no nothing in in Islam. So, uh, but churches. Uh, in churches, uh, uh, these things matter, okay? Uh, but churches do not have, whether you do at any church that you're talking about, they do not have any membership fees, okay? People are welcome when they, uh, when, when they become part of the church. The church gives social capital. It gives you social networks. When you join uh, a religion, you join the church, it gives you some uh, standing in society. You know, there is, there is a saying that he, he's a member uh, he's a friend of our prayer. He's he's a he's a he's a prayer friend. You know that's that's a common uh, way of referring to people in Islam. The people who regularly attend the mosque, they are the they become the prayer friends. 
So likewise, there are social networks in all religion, uh, all religions. Uh, uh, but Putman has identified two dimensions of this social capital. Uh, this is a this is a clear uh, demonstration of the social capital. There is the bridging capital. Okay, um, institutions. Uh, and they, they they relate to the inclusiveness of religion bridging you know reaching out okay it's an it's more of an outward looking approach okay uh, they they tolerate a range of beliefs and religious groups they're reciprocal they are ecumenical they uh, uh, ecumenical would here mean uh, cooperation within the church so uh, the the, fir the first approach is bridging capital bridging capital you can call cooperation okay cooperation between various uh, views within the church then there is the bonding capital okay the bonding capital will, will bond particular groups strongly like muslims will be joined together that will be a bridging capital but the various sects within the muslims will be, will be joined together that will be the bonding capital okay uh, um, so bonds are created between members of particular groups okay uh, cult members have strong bonds okay uh, and uh, as if we go back to durkheim then he said that this social solidarity created by the bonding capital is a very important function that religion performs okay it also gives uh, the church will also give you uh, an ideology okay uh, the ideology remember ideology we spoke about the way we look at the world and our position in the world it has got very little to do with the hereafter but our position in the world and and the position of others in relation to us in 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 the world so <clears throat> today's churches are more able to understand the secular values that exist in society okay uh, previously Churches survived by integrating themselves with the with the ruling elite, with the kings. Today, no. Today, they align themselves more with the secular world. Now comes the denomination. What is a denomination? It is something that in our country is called the sect. But in reality, it's not a sect. It's a denomination. It's a subdivision of a major religion. Like Christians uh, have Catholics and Protestants. These are the two major subdivisions. Muslims have Shias and Sunnis, where Sunnis are the mainstream Muslims, Shias are the uh, not the very mainstream Muslims. So, uh, what is a denomination generally? It starts as a breakaway group from the church. Okay, uh, they were not very tightly formed in the beginning, um, 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 but they uh, they assign missions to themselves and they carry out welfare efforts for each other. Um, in most uh, religions, denominations are a reaction against the church. So they say that, yes, the church represents the truth. We, we do not own any monopoly on the truth. Um, uh, but we are, a, we are a breakaway part of the main church. Of course, that is not the case with the Shias and the Sunnis and Islam, both of whom claim um, uh, the absolute truth uh denominations are more inclusive okay um anyone is welcome uh people can be born into that organization they, they include people okay and denomination is uh, a more in sync with the modern idea of pluralism there are different types of people this is called pluralism they have different thinkings these are different types of uh, 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 the different types the different kinds of people so pluralist denominations will be more tolerant okay they will be more tolerant of behavior that is the pluralist feature um, of the sects are not very pluralist but uh, denominations may be pluralist okay so uh, then there is of course religious pluralism uh, people in modern societies have a wide range of beliefs so um, 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 so, uh, um, uh, so yeah, if they have a wide range of beliefs, then modern uh, uh, denominations will not claim a monopoly of the belief. But that was not the case in the past, because the first denominations that were formed in Christianity were a dispute which took place in the year 1054, and the dispute was so strong that a 
that a schism took place in 1054 where the uh, where the entire east became the eastern orthodox christians and the entire west became the roman catholic christians so so the schism was so schisms can be so strong within religions so <coughs> what are sectarian cycles then sectarian cycles are um, uh, a religious conflict in which the discriminated group uh, in this case by the way in the christian schism the eastern orthodox felt that uh, they were the uh, they were they were the discriminated group they break away from the main religion or the main sect okay now let's look at sects more more closely i will uh, uh, i will just go uh, into this very briefly look at the sects very closely uh, uh, sects are puritanical you know what does puritanical mean they try to return to the pure practices of religion okay uh, they have a level of dissatisfaction with the prevailing religious practices they want more purity okay and they uh, um, uh, they are not very happy with secular uh, secular tendencies okay they are not very accommodating as we saw the de denominations are more accommodating but sects are less accommodating because they are more puritanical okay uh, like the mormon church in the united states it uh, it initially advocated polygamy but uh, of course under pressure from the us government they probably uh, gave it up but they did and a lot of americans in the mormons which is in toward the western side of the united states did practice this okay uh, uh, the, these sects are also based on other factors. They can be found due to other factors. These are relate, related to individual deprivation, economic deprivation, social deprivation, ethical de uh, e ethical issues, ethical problems, uh, where, the, where the values of one, uh, one person is not compa compatible with the value of the group, which calls itself the religious group. So that is also one area where new sects can form. And then um, um, people who are searching for meaning within religion can form their own sects. So sects, of course, are more puritanical, less inclusive. The denominations are more inclusive. They are less strongly held um, and, and uh, they can be more accommodating at times. Uh, at times. So, uh, <coughs> uh, so sects usually have a collective feeling of deprivation. Please do keep in mind, they are also often led by very charismatic leaders who give innovative solutions okay, to the, to the problems. Another thing that you remember that religions face, which we discussed in the past, is disenchantment. What is disenchantment? Enchant Feeling of being let down by a religion. Now, this, uh, this, this may be difficult to understand, but for a long time, the Jews felt this uh, disenchantment. They were looking for the promised land, which had been promised to them in the Bible, but they could never find it. So they were disenchanted. Many of them stopped believing, believing in God. But anyway, disenchantment leads to the creation of new sects. Okay. Um, um, if the channels of problem resolution are closed within the mainstream religion, then sects can offer one way of dealing with these disenchantments okay so this is this is where we will stop and uh, please do keep in mind again these these sects are exclusive because they are based on this um, uh, feeling of disenchantment and these dissatisfaction with mainstream religion okay thank you we will continue in the next video